Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Today I'm excited to celebrate Pi Day. So of course Pi Day is on the 14th of March 314 which is the first three digits of the infinite number Pi. And of course Pi is a very important number in mathematics and science and it's defined as the ratio of a circle, the circumference of a circle, to its diameter. So what that means is if you measure the outside of a circle very accurately, divide through by its diameter you will get the number pi 3.1415 and like I say it's an infinite number this is a very cool diagram of showing that it's uh, showing the number pi sort of disappearing off into infinity so in the past uh, some of the pi day celebrations what I've done I've created a Lego Technic uh, device or gadget that tries to implement the pi the number pi as a gearing ratio between the input axle and output axle and the way I've done that is simply by approximating pi by a fraction so for example some different ways uh, of approximating pi with a fraction so even though it's an irrational infinite number you can approximate it so if we divide 22 by 7 you'll get pi to three uh, accurate numbers 3.14 if you want it more accurately what you need is uh, generally speaking longer fractions so another fraction would be 333 divided by 106 and that will give you pi to five significant figures which you know two significant figures more accurate and if you want even more accuracy what I did I used 355 divided by 113 which gives you pi to a seven significant figures so that is a very cool fraction it's, uh, it's actually a relatively small fraction to create a very uh, accurate approximation to pi numerically and that's what I've done in the past in today's video I've taken another approach I've gone back to the basics I've gone back to the definition of pi of being the ratio of the circumference to the diameter and I've tried to create a machine that implements the uh, gearing ratio of pi by using that definition. Alright so if I want to make a gearing ratio of pi what I need to go back to is the definition of a gearing ratio so just remember that if you've got two gears one's got for example 24 teeth and the other one's got 12 teeth then if that 24 tooth gear drives that 12 tooth gear then what will happen is that every time this goes around once that's 24 teeth that will force the other one to go around two times because this one is twice as big as that one. We've got 24 to 12 which gives us a gearing ratio of 2. Now the same thing works with uh, wheels so instead of gears I can use wheels. So in the case of wheels and this one here on the left is twice as large as the one on the right so you can see here it's got about the, uh, double the diameter or radius. Two of these make one of those. So therefore the gearing ratio between this one and that one is simply dividing the uh, circumference of the first wheel and dividing that by the second wheel so in this case it will be 2 as well because the wheel on the left is twice as big on the wheel on the right so if I want to create a gearing ratio of pi what I would need is that one wheel has got a circumference for example of pi in some sort of units and the other one has got a circumference of 1 now the problem with that is of course is that um, both of these because they are sort of using discrete Lego units uh, will both have a circumference of some sort of factor of pi and then when you divide one by the other the pi's will cancel and just be left with the ratios of the uh, of the radii so what I really need is you know one wheel with the radius of pi for example and the other one just with a regular radius now of course in Lego there's none of those so that is a big issue so one idea I did have I thought well hang on what I want is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter so I've got this piece here which is approximately the diameter of this wheel if it was driving that piece like this then every time this goes round uh, there'll be pi of these in you know, that circle so the idea I came up with was to instead of using a wheel to use a square wheel so now what we've got is if this length there is the diameter of the wheel we've kind of got four diameters on the right we have got one uh, pi diameters on the left because that's pi times uh, uh, the um, circumference divided by pi to give us a diameter so that means if this left wheel drives the one on the right or the square on the right then what will happen is that we have got the ratio of pi to uh, or the circumference which is pi times the diameter divided by four diameters so we'll get pi over four as the ratio between this axle and that axle which is exactly what I needed and of course pi over four is pretty similar to pi I'll need to just multiply that one by four and I will have the ratio of pi between axle one and axle two so that was my answer 
All right, so I'll just show you my implementation based on that idea. So this is uh, the main part of the machine at the back there, which again is that wheel driving a square. In this case, I've got two of them just to uh, avoid any sort of slippage issues. So um, you know, especially around the corners when that wheel is driving on that corner there, it tends to slip. So while one wheel's on the corner, um, the other one is on the side. So that makes it quite well to drive. Now, so the gearing ratio between this wheel and the big square wheel, I've drawn that on here. Uh, I've chosen a wheel that happens to have a um, diameter of 56 millimeters. Now, of course, 56 millimeters is seven Lego units. Remember that Lego units are increments of eight millimeters, and that is driving a square with a side length of 14 units. So, if we draw that up here and do the simple maths, we've got seven times pi, which is this wheel here. Uh, that's seven units, and that is the driving another wheel which is four sides times 14 units gives us pi over eight so that is a very good pi ratio pi over eight and you can simply multiply that final ratio at the output by eight to get pi itself so what that means is that the gearing ratio between this point and this point or between those axles is pi over eight all right so we're now creating the gearing ratio between this axle and that axle of pi over eight so that's that wheel driving the square so what is the rest of the gadget for well the rest of the gadget is to actually verify that result i guess when you do the maths it seems to work out but in practice you can always find either small mistakes you've made or assumptions that you've made that don't quite work out so what i've done in this second section of the gadget is implement that uh, approximation of pi uh, by taking the ratio of 355 to 113 which like I talked about before gave us pi to an accuracy of seven uh, significant figures so I've got the output of the square wheel coming down this axis I've got the output of the exact fraction coming down this axis and the, by using this red, red differential here I'm actually comparing the ratio of uh, the one to the other by taking the difference so ideally if they create the exact same result then this differential should not rotate because it's simply the difference between this point and that point. I've got one rotating clockwise, one rotating anti-clockwise, so if they're rotating at the same speed, then the output of the differential, which is driven through this gear here onto this indicator, will not rotate at all. So that is the idea of this experiment. We're comparing two different methods of generating the pi as a gearing ratio and looking at the difference to compare the accuracy. All right, so I've connected the battery box. Let's try out this experiment and see what happens. Okay, so we've got the motor driving the square wheel. It's being driven by those wheels onto the square. That is generating that pi over eight gearing ratio onto this differential. The other part of the mechanism, I've got a one to eight here that is being driven through that 355 to 113 gearing ratio that is being fed up through the bottom here. And they're going in opposite directions to create the difference between the pi rate generated by the square wheel and the fraction and we are comparing the difference through this difference in differential and look at that that is the output if the two ratios are identical then this will not move at all and look at that it is not rotating it's just it is a bit of wobble there but it's very minor it's due to the uh, implementation of the gearing ratios look at that it's amazing it's pretty much identical pi over eight we have created it wow what a successful experiment just demonstrated we've created pi over eight in two different mechanisms they both uh, are almost equal what a fantastic way to finish pi day thanks for watching please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time bye